And last Sunday night, we covered Proverbs 31, 1 to 9 about wine and strong drink. The Bible's pretty clear on that, isn't it? Amen. So, uh, the world's not clear on it, and carnal churches aren't clear on it, but the Bible's clear on it. And tonight, Proverbs 31, the great search. Proverbs 31, 10, who can find a virtuous woman who can find a virtuous woman i've been greatly blessed by god in my life my mother was a virtuous woman i married a girl whose mother was a virtuous woman and the girl i married is a virtuous woman so i've had a good life i've had an easy life and uh, those of you that haven't fared so well uh, Pray for you. God will help you. Honestly, you young men that aren't, you, you, you young fellows aren't, aren't married yet. I started to say aren't saved. You, you too. But if you're not married, I want to tell you something. The, apart from getting saved, the best thing you'll ever do in this life is marry a girl that loves God Amen. and believes the Bible. And the worst, th- the worst thing, apart from not getting saved, the worst thing you could do in this life is marry a woman, marry a girl, doesn't love God, doesn't believe the Bible. Because I don't care how much you love the Lord and want to live for Him, if she doesn't want to, your hands are tied, your feet are tied, you are bound and gagged. First Corinthians says man's married, he's got to seek how he may please his wife. That's what it says. And same for you girls. You say, I just want to get married. Um, you don't want to just get married as much as you want to marry somebody that loves God and believes the Bible. If you marry somebody else, you don't have a chance. And I, I, we'll get this in just a second. Now, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to meet somebody, and she doesn't believe like you believe, or he doesn't believe like you believe, and you say, well, it's okay, we love each other. That's okay, we've agreed to, you know, not fight about religion, this and that. That's fine, but one day you're going to have a baby. And now one of you is going to have to give up what one of you believes to raise that baby in accord with what the other one, how the other one wants that baby to be raised. So you better, you better think about those things. And uh, one of you is going to have to give up his God or her God. One is going to have to give up his belief or her belief in order to raise that child to stay together. Or you would we'll, we'll just split up. Well, that ain't, that ain't right either. So you better be careful. Uh, don't find a woman and try to turn her into a virtuous woman. That's not what he said. He said who can find a virtuous woman. Don't find a, don't find a sorry, good-for-nothing man and then make him your missionary project. Uh, that's, 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 a, that's, a bad, that's a bad way to go. Amen. Amen. So he said, well, he'll change. Can you, find, can you find much evidence of that out there? Well, sure, she'll change. Not likely. Not likely. So, all right. Anyway, we're going to read this passage tonight. This, this, this is the portion of Scripture that really lifts up the ladies and, and gives them God's target to shoot for. This is, what, this is what God wants you to be. This is what your husband wants you to be. He just didn't want to tell you. He wanted me to tell you. And so, so I'll tell you tonight from the Bible, and then we can all live happily ever after. That's right. God knows what he's talking about. So, all right, let's pray. Father, help us tonight. Uh, we uh, thank you, Lord, for all these uh, uh, ladies and girls that are here this evening. Pray you'd help them, God, to uh, set their sights high and, and reach for uh, what you have held out as best for them, that they might know the joy of uh, abundant life and a life that pleases you and a life that's a blessing to others. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Proverbs uh, 31.10, Who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. A bad, a bad woman is expensive. A good woman is a treasure. A, a bad woman, take every dollar you got and one more. A, a good woman, make you a rich man. Rich in joy, rich in peace, rich in contentment, rich in satisfaction. Price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. 
so that he shall have no need of spoil. You know, pick up, you pick up your newspaper in the morning instead of your Bible, you're going to read about killing, cutting, beating, arrests, domestic violence. Let me tell you something. What a, what a joy in a man's life to know I'm off at work and I don't have the slightest concern about what my wife's up to while I'm gone. What a joy. I, I'm out there in, in the battlefield fighting for my country, or I'm out there ministering for the Lord in the good work of the gospel. I'm traveling on my business trip. I don't have to give one moment's worry or concern. Is my wife faithful? Is my wife doing right? Am I going to come home and find some disaster she created? The heart of her husband to safely trust in her. The greatest thing you got in a marriage is not a house, it's not a car, it's not money in the bank, it's confidence. Absolute 100% confidence in one another. You hear, it, I was going to say, that newspaper, every day you pick up a newspaper, some guy, some guy shot some woman in the middle of the night. I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why that shooting went on. Almost, almost every time, one of them's messing around. It's a love triangle uncovered. And somebody didn't like that love triangle and put a stop to it. I don't, think, I don't think a man ought to ever punch a woman, hit a woman, kick a woman, all this domestic violence stuff. But I'll tell you this, I've been in court and watched a man stand there and explain to that judge the reason he beat that guy up. He came home and found that guy in the arms of his wife. The heart of her husband to safely trust in her. Brother, you've got a wife right now, right now. And you could go away for an hour, for a day, for a week, for a month. And never be the least bit concerned about her being faithful to you, true to you. You ought to thank her and thank God. And sister, brother, when that confidence is gone, you erode that confidence, you break down that confidence. It might be your little online chit-chat. It might be your flirtatious behavior. It might be, well, it was just a little rendezvous. Listen, it's hard to get that back. It's hard to get that back. Confidence is a fragile thing. Uncertainty uh, certainty is a delicate thing. You don't want to ruin that. Heart of a husband to safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. I don't need to be a rich man. I got a good wife. I don't need to pursue the treasures and vain things of this world. I got happiness right there at home waiting for me. That's what he says. That's the Bible. Verse 12. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Now, that's what's vowed. I've heard those vows said so many times. I, I have no idea how many uh, marriages I've conducted. And that, that young lady, she stands right there. And will you do this? Yes. Will you do that? Yes. Will you promise to do that thing? Yes. All your days? Yes. Absolutely. But then two years later, you're sitting in the office. She said, well, I didn't know he was going to say that. Well, I didn't know he was going to act like that. Well, I didn't know he had a temper. I didn't, I didn't know he'd lose his job. I didn't know we'd be eating pork and beans instead of steak. You want a virtuous woman? You know what the Bible says about a virtuous woman? She will do him good and not evil. The good days of her life and the bad days of her life. The high days in her life and the low days in her life. The up days in her life and the down days in her life. She will do him good. Now where does that virtue come from? comes from God. God's good to me on the good days and the bad days. He's good to me when I'm acting right. And he's good to me when I'm not acting right. The Bible says a woman of virtue, a godly woman, a woman who's like Christ. She'll be good when he's not good. She'll do right when he's not right. She will do him good all the days of her life. Hallelujah. Verse 13, she seeketh wool. And flax. So what's that? She's out shopping. <laughs> I know you guys don't like that. You well, bless God, I got a virtuous woman. I keep her under lock and key. I don't let her out of the house. The heart of her husband to safely trust in her. I'm going to let her out there go around, run around, go spend all my money. And the heart of her husband to safely trust in her. You say, I don't want her out there shopping for clothes all the time. You want to go shopping for her clothes for her? She wants to go buy a dress, and I don't have to go have a good time. 
She can take two or three of you girls with her, stay all day. I'd rather her stay all day with you than one hour with me. <laughs> Amen. Come on, you guys, you need a pair of shoes. You know what size you wear. You know what you want. You go where they sell it. You walk in there and get it and go home. You don't spend half a day looking at shoes. You wise, where are you going? I'm going to get a pair of shoes. I see you want about a half hour. Half hour? This could take days. We go on an expedition, a safari. <laughs> Let's go get a pair of shoes. It's amazing. So she wants to go out and seek wool and flax. That's great. She knows what she's looking for. I don't. I don't know about that kind of stuff. I'm glad I don't. There's, there's nothing in me that I have nothing in common with those fashion designer guys. Amen. Nothing. I don't want to. Oh, that's just darling. You are too. Get away. <laughs> you guys got to lighten up, man. Let her go buy some clothes. So we don't spend my money. Well, yeah, you spent it on something you didn't need. You bought some junk. Amen. And, ladies, worketh willingly with her hands. Worketh, that's the first part. Willingly, that's the second part, with her hands. Virtuous woman's not lazy. Virtuous woman doesn't consider a tough day on the job walk into the pantry, get another bag of potato chips to finish the soap operas. You know, if you just, you just, you just get off the couch and work a little, you wouldn't have to watch some of those TV doctors telling you how to get in shape. Right. <laughs> Sit there with half a pie in your lap, watching Dr. So-and-so tell you about the new diet workout plan. Here's a diet workout plan. Instead of using your arm to do this, use it to do this. Right. Amen. <laughs> hey, it, it, if it can lift a fork, it can push an iron. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anybody, anybody else brave enough to appreciate that? <laughs> There is nothing wrong, there is nothing wrong with the lady of the house doing a hard day's work while the man of the house is out on a job doing a hard day's work. That's a good combination. That's good teamwork. Praise the Lord. And so the Bible says, I didn't say it, the Bible says she worketh willingly with her hands. Willingly. She's not griping about it, grumbling about it, murmuring about it, complaining about it nagging about it. Any words I've left out? Um, verse 13, or 14. She is like the merchant ships. That means she likes to swim. No. She like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. That means she went to the store and she didn't get a little bit. She loaded up. It didn't say, here comes a rowboat with the food. It says, here comes a merchant ship. With, with food. From afar, here come some bananas from South America and some uh, citrus from Israel and some of this from over here and some of that from over there and she brings it all home. Man, I like that. I'm glad. I like that. I like that. Y'all want to blow your budget? Now, uh, there's a reason I don't go clothes shopping with my wife because that's not a lot of fun. The reason I don't go grocery shopping with my wife because we spend way too much money. We buy all kind of stuff I go to the store that she didn't come home with. She goes to the store. Why? She's a virtuous woman. But I tell you what she does. She goes out there. We need this. We need that. We got to have this. We got to have that. And she knows what we need because she knows how to put it all together and make food out of it. <laughs> really? I mean, here's a box of some kind of powder and here's a, here's a bottle of some kind of goo and here's some sort of <laughs> spice in a jar over here. And she throws all that stuff in a pan and puts it in the oven and comes out and it's good to eat. That's a virtuous woman, man. I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. That's work. You don't do that three, three, two, two, three times a day, seven days a week, year after year? Not me. Thank God for a virtuous woman. 
You guys come and watch for supper. How come supper ain't ready? Because it's work. It's hard. We just had this two weeks ago. Yeah, I'll go to Africa. They had the same thing every day for the last 5,700 years. <laughs> Not hard to figure out what to cook. You ain't got nothing. We get lots of food. And uh, so you let your wife, you let her crank up your merchant ship and drive it down to the marketplace and fill up that ship with stuff from all over the world and bring it home, cook you dinner. And you say, thank you, honey, dear. I appreciate this. This is a blessing. Amen. 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 I wasn't married my whole life. Moved our house, you know. Got, got to, you know, live on my own. That's great. But hot dogs and tuna fish, macaroni and cheese. You get sick of that stuff after a while. You say, why didn't you just put all... You know, I got all the stuff you can put in the microwave. Not when I moved out. <laughs> they didn't have all that stuff back then. You had to fix it or... Anyway. I mean, they had all those microwave dinners. They just... It was all in a little tube called a Frankfurter. <laughs> now it comes in different shapes and colors and sizes. It's, it's a microwave this and a microwave that. It's just a hot dog. <laughs> This looks different. <laughs> All right, verse 15. Mm. She riseth also about 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> Staggers out of bed, hung over. No, she riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She's up early fixing breakfast. The baby's crying. Guess who gets up to get the baby? The husband says, you got to get the baby. i got to go to work tomorrow. Yeah, she got nothing to do tomorrow. I've worked all day. How about bring me a snack? That ain't fair. The virtuous woman riseth also while it is yet night. And she does that to give meat to her household. Food preparation, a lot of work. Food cleanup, a lot of work. Meal organizing, a lot of work. But she does it. And a portion to her maidens. She considereth the field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. I know some of you guys think it'd just be some kind of a sin for uh, you to let your wife know she had any brains. But you're hurting yourself. You got a you got a woman smart, let her be smart. You got a woman knows how to do things, let her do things. You got a woman figure out business and finance and uh, making deals and all that sort of thing, let her do it, man. man. Two is stronger than one. Two brains ought to be better than one. Two sets of talents and abilities ought to get you farther than another. Some of these, you know, some of these guys, these these. Oh, bless God, I believe I'm the head of my house, and my wife she she's just gonna sit there and take care of me. Well, you're dumb. Get over yourself. Let her do what she can do. If she can go out there and buy a field and turn a profit on that thing, she can plant a garden or a vineyard and grow some crops, grow some food and make you some money or save you some money, why wouldn't you let her do it? They want a Christian home. We don't have any that worldly stuff in here. So you got no TV and you got no dance records and you got, you know, you don't, you don't have this, you don't have that. What's she going to do all day? Well, pray and read the Bible. If you were home all day, you wouldn't pray and read the Bible from sun up to sundown. Why do you think she's going to pray and read the Bible from sun up to sundown? Let her use the abilities God's given her. Let her use the talents God's given her. It's not going to hurt you, not if she's a virtuous woman. She girdeth her loins. With strength and strengtheneth her arms. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. The one thing I can't find in Scripture from one end to the other, that's one good thing said about laziness. I can't find one good thing about lazy. Now, if you if you have you've been in an accident, you got some kind of disease, 
Somebody, you got in a car wreck, somebody busted your body up, we understand that. But eating yourself to death is not a disability. Amen. It's an ability. Right. <laughs> Lo- loafing yourself to death is not a disability. They're spending, I read they're spending like something like uh, $80 million a year of your tax money giving people these scooters to ride around in because they have, they've been diagnosed with obesity. Well, how about undiagnose it? She's the virtuous woman. You know what she does? She strengthens her legs. She strengthens her arms. That means she's busy. She's active, she's working, she's doing what needs to be done. Let me turn this up. They're not hearing me. Ladies are unhappy, the men are terrified. So we're living a woman in a weaker vessel, um, emotionally, according to the Bible, spiritually, can be, according to the Bible. Physically, you better, you better be careful saying that. I've been beat up more than once. I can't mean physically. There's some women stronger than their husband. You know that. You, you put a baby on your hip. Walk around two hours carrying that baby, loading up a grocery cart, getting bags of groceries, haul them out the car, all the way, got that baby on the hip all the time, put the baby in. You couldn't do that. Honey, take this kid. My arm's about to fall off. But it's been three minutes. I know, but he's heavy. <laughs> she walked around that thing all day long. She strengthened her arms. She girded the loins with strength. Verse 18. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. She's selling stuff. Her candle goeth not out by night. Man, the sun goes down. She's still busy. Night falls. She's still working. Husband over there on the couch, snoring. He put in a long eight hours. Glad he did. He ought to do that. Bible says so. But she was up before he was, getting him ready for work, making sure he had clean clothes, making sure he had lunch to take with him, making sure he had breakfast to eat, getting the kids all ready for school. Some ladies don't send the kids, they do school, and then they make lunch, and then they do some more school, they go pick up the kids, and then they do the housework, and then they make supper, and then husband comes home and eats supper, he goes, sits down, and then she cleans up after supper, and then he goes to sleep, and she's working all end of the night. You say, that's just not fair, shouldn't eat that fruit. <laughs> You should have left that tree alone. <laughs> thy desire should be to thy husband, and we've been taking full advantage of that ever since. But you know what the virtuous woman does? She does that. She does that. She's, she's not bitter about it. She's not grumbling about it. She's not trying to get out of it. She's doing all that she can do for her family, for her husband. Praise the Lord. Her hand, she, uh, 19, she layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. Well, preacher, I can tell you I've never done that. That's a sewing machine. Old times. She's making her, making her own clothes. She's making her children's own clothes. My wife did that. She made, she made all her daughter's clothes growing up. I don't know. Uh, used to make all her own clothes. It's a blessing. Blessing to know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. That's complicated. That's hard to do. Um, that was back in the days for goodwill and everything, you know. Now you about buy something cheaper and you can make it, but pretty hard to find something uh, modest apparel. You ladies go out, you got to buy about four, four layers of what they're selling in the store to cover everything that's supposed to be covered. <laughs> One item won't do it. It's just the world. And I don't know, you'd, you'd think it, it couldn't cost any more. I mean, whatever they're paying those people in Indonesia and China, it couldn't cost them any more to sew it on up to here, but they seem to quit right here. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, they, maybe they're protesting. That's it. We're going to work all day for a bowl of rice, but we're not going to make a shirt comes up to here. It's gonna, we're going to stop right here. That's our new contract. I don't know how that works. 
But anyway, this virtuous woman, she knows how to make those clothes. That's hard work. It takes time. Mending, fixing, patching. You don't have to get something new every time something goes bad. Fix it up. Virtuous woman. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Look, she's done all that to take care of her husband, done all that to take care of her household, and she's still got time and energy and concern left for other people outside her house. Isn't that an amazing thing? I'll tell you, there's this some lady right here. You, f- you find a girl like this, you're doing mighty good. 21, she is not afraid of the snow for her household. Well, they were smart enough to move south. No, it's, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Now, think about this. You, th- these girls growing up now, boys growing up now, most, most adults now. It's, it's, it's maddening trying to pastor people and help people in this generation. Because they, they, they live like it's Sunday, but there's not going to be a Monday. It's, it's November, but there'll never be a December. They just live for right now. If they got $50 in their pocket, they're going to spend $50. If they, if they got an hour to do something, they're going to do something for right now. There's no thought for tomorrow. There's no planning for tomorrow. There's no preparation for tomorrow. There's no concern for tomorrow. Look, if it's summer, guess what? Winter is coming. If it's winter, guess what? Summer is coming. You know, why, you know why these girls walk around pregnant, no husband? They didn't think about it. You know why these people getting, getting you know, well, I got a raise on the job. I went from $8 an hour to $9 an hour. Let's go buy a new car. You know why they do that? They're not thinking about it. You know why I got all these people living in, in $500,000 homes? who've been doing good to afford a $150,000 home, they weren't thinking about it. You know what this virtuous woman does? She says, I need to make preparation now for the snowy days in our lives, for the cold times in our lives, for the days when my children need coats upon their backs and warm shoes upon their feet. I need to plan for the future. Our society, listen, you're not going to fix this thing. So we're going to vote in somebody else. You're not going to fix this thing. Because you got people who don't understand that there, there are supposed to be consequences for misbehavior. You gamble all your money away, we'll just take taxpayers' money and give you what you gambled away. You drink your money away, we'll just take some money from people who didn't drink their money away and give it to you. So what happens, one day, one day, there's not going to be enough money left to take from people that aren't on drugs and give it to druggies. And there's not going to be enough money left to take from people who took care of their families to give it to people who had families had no intention of taking care of. And then you're going to see cities burning and blood flowing and riots in the street like you have never seen because this nation would not know how to work their way out of another depression. You say, well, the, pro- the problem's economic trouble. You had, you had economic trouble from 1929 to 1945, and, and you didn't have killing, stealing, raping, looting, burning, and child molesting. Now a hurricane hits a city, two days later, they're stealing everything they can get. Say, so why? They don't fear God. So, so you, you're not going to fix this thing unless you, get, unless you get this nation back to a God-based mindset. You can't fix it. So you better not be looking for a girl that's just pretty, though that helps. You better be looking for a girl that understands if I blow every paycheck before it gets, before it gets cold, <laughs> we're not going to make it tomorrow. If I, if I burn through every opportunity to prepare for the future as though there were no future, we're going to hit some hard times and not get through them. 
Snowy days are coming. Virtuous woman sees the future, prepares for it. 22, she maketh herself coverings of tapestry. I mean, she walks around old drapes again, furniture. Her clothing is silk and purple. Now listen, fellas. I am not going to tell you how to run your house beyond what the Bible says. And I'm not going to tell you how to raise your children beyond what the Bible says. But the Bible doesn't say your wife has to walk around wearing old feed bags. <laughs> well, I don't have nobody to lust after my wife. Well, you want them laughing at your wife? I mean, one, one draws just as much attention to the other. I'll grant you, those, those Amish girls are dressed modestly, but everybody in the mall is looking at them. They are drawing as much attention to themselves as somebody who's dressed inappropriately. And, and guys, listen, you, you would think nothing of spending $400 on gear to catch $50 worth of fish. Oh, bless God, I got this new uh, triple clutch gasket roarer thing on my car, and I, I, get a, I get half a mile a gallon better gas. Yeah, that's cool. Then she goes out and buys something. Well, what would you pay for that? Well, I, you know, I haven't bought a new dress. And, a new dress? You think we got money for a new dress? We got money for a new anything you want. I don't say that, sister, but, but uh, just let me, let, me, let me help you out here. But there's nothing wrong with a woman wearing silk instead of burlap. Right. <laughs> nothing wrong with a woman wearing purple instead of, uh, you know, well, you know, wear anything, you know, we don't wear anything but black. We, you know, we, you know, we, we're, like the, we're like the pilgrims. You ain't like the pilgrims. You don't grow your own food. You don't have an outhouse. Everybody wants to be like old-fashioned times, except their convenience and their comfort. So anyway, <laughs> and she covers herself with tapestry. Now here's what I would say. A virtuous woman maketh herself coverings. So... It's okay if it's pretty. It's okay if it's shiny. It's okay if it's sparkly. It's pink, you know, girl color. <laughs> but it ought to cover you. It ought to cover you. Every man in here has got eye trouble, sister. Don't mess him up. Now you wanna know what you wanna know what modest peril is? I can tell you what modest peril is. It's pretty easy. You wanna know what modest peril is. Here you are sitting in a place, a room full of people, right here. And God spoke to your heart. And you want to come forward and kneel on this altar and pray to God. The man's sitting there, the man's sitting there, the man's sitting here, and the man's standing right there singing a hymn. If you're kneeling there at that altar, nothing should be seen that he shouldn't see. Right. Now, if you can kneel before God and pray in a church service and everything's covered and everything's all right, then you're wearing what you ought to be wearing. If you, if you can't do that in, in mixed company, then you need to pull something up or pull something down or loosen something up or fix something. You say, why? Because men have eye trouble. Their wife's going to say, what are you looking at her for? He don't even know he's looking at her. Just been that way since the fall of man. What are you doing? No, nothing, nothing. Nothing. What are you doing? Uh, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I just ruined another evening at home. Look, <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't spend all that money. Take her out to dinner. Don't watch the waitress all the way back to the to the um, to the cooking place. Amen. You ready to order yet? Oh, hi. 
sweet talk the waitress and gripe at your wife. <laughs> all right, how we doing? Now, while she's doing all that work, verse 23, her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She's home doing homework with the kids. She's home mending the clothes. She's home doing the laundry. And the husband's got an important meeting down at the royal order of the moose. There, that, hey, this is, it's a big meeting tonight. We're deciding on whether or not to get a new pool table. Yeah. Honey, I, I, don't, I might be home late tonight. This, this could be a long one. <laughs> so while he's, while he's sitting around with the boys down at the, uh, you know, the Grand Mystic Knights of the Sea Lodge. <laughs> just seeing, okay, that we... Got his little foot, you know, his little bucket on his head, little tassel hanging from it, and all his uh, Muslim symbols. Gives a secret handshake, puts on it. You, you know why? You know why that fez is bloody from Morocco. When a Muslim killed a Christian, he'd dip his hat in their blood. Dumb American. America's so dumb. So anyway, while he's sitting down at the lodge, thinking up secret handshakes, and you know putting on his special apron and, you know, reciting his magic words and all that foolishness, then getting drunk. She's home, she's home working. And her husband's known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land because all the other guys are jealous because when he gets home, his wife's going to be glad to see him. And when they get home, she's going to take the rolling pin to him. And they all know, listen, you got a good wife. Everybody knows you got a good wife. All your friends know you got a good wife. All your associates know you got a good wife. The guys you work with, they wish they had a wife like yours. It's a blessing. All right, verse 24. She maketh fine linen and selleth it. Come on, what do you think about Marsha? What's it? Do this selling stuff, make some money. Good, you ain't making any. Look, sister. Don't neglect those children to make money. Don't neglect that house to make money. Don't neglect that husband to make money. But if you can do everything you're supposed to do, and you still got time to, you know, run laps around the old man, do something profitable. Do something useful. Praise the Lord. You don't have to, but a virtuous woman does. Amen. That nest gets empty. Careful. Kids move out, dogs move in. More dogs move in. More dogs move in. The gift that keeps on giving. She maketh linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Not even going to comment on that. <laughs> they didn't they make those anymore. <laughs> Nobody wants to say. Anybody even <laughs> forget it? <laughs> just, just some things you just let them be. Twenty-five. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Young lady, sister, if you'll do right by that husband, it'll be it'll go well with you. You go right by that family, it'll go well with you. You do right by God, it'll go well with you. Look, here's what's going to happen. I got miles on me now. Here's what's going to happen. There's 7 billion people in this world. If you find one man in this world, that will love you with all his heart and give his energy and his strength and his talent to making your life better when you are 50, 60, 70, 80 you will have what few of those 7 billion people have because they don't have one single person in this world that would lay down his life for them 
You ought to invest your life in that man you're married to. Sir, let me tell you something. There's 7 billion people in this world. Probably 4 billion of them are women. It might, it might go one way and you're 25, 35, high rolling at 45. But one of these days, all you're going to have in this world is one person that loves you, cares for you, is going to sit there with you through your decline, through your, your physical, uh, your downhill days. There's no future at all but leaving this world and going to heaven. And there she is, faithful, true, loving. i tell you what I'd do. I'd start working toward that when I was 25. I'd keep working toward that when I was 35. I wouldn't give up on that when I was 50. One day, one day, apart from your relationship to God, all you're going to have is your husband or your wife. You ought to treat them at least twice as good as you treat anybody else in this world. Best thing you got. Best thing you got. Don't forget it. She openeth her mouth. I could go a number of directions. I know you're in suspense. She opened her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. Okay, first of all, gentlemen, God didn't just give males the ability of speech. God in his wisdom gave ladies the ability to talk. I started to say the same as you, but even better. Longer, faster, greater endurance. Come on. It's, well, Mo, I just, if I want, if I want, Mo, I see, uh, uh, stop it. Stop it. God gave her sense as much or more than you, intelligence as much or more than you, understanding as much or more than you. If she's saved, he also gave her the Holy Spirit, not just you. He taught her the Bible, not just you. If, he, if she's got some God-given wisdom, if you're making a mess of something and she wants to say, I think there's a better way to do this, listen. Amen. You don't tell me nothing. Come on. Get over yourself. Right. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Let her help you. Amen. you got four sets of eyes. Why are you just using two? You've got two sets of understanding. Why are you just using one? Take advantage of her wisdom. The Bible says, sister, in her tongue is the law, the law of kindness. This virtuous woman, she just, she made it a fixed rule. I will not speak unless I'm speaking kindly. I, 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 I might once in a decade be forced to disagree with my husband, but I will never speak to him without kindness. It's just a law. I will be kind to my children. When I'm correcting them, if I must, I will be kind to them. I will speak kind words at all times, under all circumstances, because that's just what I am. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If her words are kind, then she got a kind heart. It's needed. It's needed. Men are rough. Men are hard. Our society's in ruins because we're making men effeminate. People point that people, you know, they say, well, you know, that neighborhood, it's it's this ethnic group and it's this cultural group, and that's why they have so much crime and violence. No, you go in those neighborhoods, I'll tell you what they have. They have women raising sons with no man in that house. You put that situation in any culture of any color or any economic strata, things are going to go to it's going to go to to ruin. Because that man, God put him there to be firm, to be hard, to be demanding, to draw the line, to execute judgment. 
And he put the woman there to balance that. Law of kindness. Sister, you ought to be kind all the time. All the time. We got we got a lot of young men growing up nowadays, and they 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 say they're confused. They reach their mature years and they're confused. They don't know if they're a man or a woman. A lot of it's because dad acted like a woman and mom acted like a man. They're confused because they've seen confusion every day of their life. A woman ought to be kind, sweet, gentle, merciful. That man ought to be firm and hard and demanding. That's a good balance. And we don't have much of that balance out there anymore. Need both. Young men especially need both. All right. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Now, look, I'm, I'm just trying to help you. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be offensive. I know there's one, there's one thing no preacher touches. I know that. I understand that. No preacher wants to touch it. Honestly, you can eat all you want if you work hard enough to balance what you eat. But if eating is not balanced by working it off, a little goes a long way. And it goes direct to all the wrong places. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to help you out. It doesn't say the virtuous woman doesn't eat bread. But she doesn't eat just to eat and then eat some more just to eat some more. Come on, it's America. Go to Walmart. Pretty soon they're going to have to have triple doors, not double doors. <laughs> Honestly, it can't be like this in the rest of the world. But the more channels of cable you got and the more, uh, you know, Games of solitaire you play on your computer, and the more face plant time you spend eating all the while, you're hurting yourself. Walk, climb the stairs. Where are you going, honey? Um, where's the keys? I can't find the car keys. Where are you going? Out to the mailbox. It's at the end of the driveway. I'm not trying to be mean. She eateth not the bread of idleness. We got a bunch of hard working ladies around here. They work hard at home. They work hard for Jesus. Round the clock. It's a blessing. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. If your children aren't praising you and blessing you and telling you what a great mom you are, Don't yell at them again. Find out why. Don't double down on on the tirade. Little boys, little girls ought to love their mother. Not run from her. Not cry, hold on to the teacher's leg. Don't make me go home. Don't make me go home. Home ought to be their favorite place. Mom ought to be their favorite person. Her husband also, he praiseth her. Gentlemen, y'all do that. You got a virtuous woman, you got a good wife. Wouldn't hurt you to let her hear you telling people that. I got a good wife, I got a good woman. Let her hear hear you say it. Praise her. Praise her. She... I'm sorry, 29. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful. God, look, God hadn't made us all the same. He has favored some men. You know that's true. Life's easier for those men that God has favored than those that just have to get by. You know that's true. Favor is deceitful. Just just because somebody looks like he's got something going for him, he might be a crook. He might be a adulterer. 
he might be a reprobate. You can't just go by looks. Look at that woman. Wow. 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 She's got it all. She might have more than you think. She might have wicked heart. She might have bitter spirit. She might be a cheat. She might be an adulteress. Better be careful. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain. Now, look, fair, just I'm being honest. Life's easier for the beautiful than for the not so beautiful. You know that. They get advantages, they get waited on, they get treated different, they get talked to different. But guess what? There's this thing walking around out there looking for every one of us called time. And it, it, it might, he might come to your house first, or he might come to your house last on the block. But one day, time is going to ring your doorbell, and when he opens the door, he, you, when you open the door, he's going to say, put it right there. What? Beauty. Put it right there. No. Yes, I've come for it. Put it right there. If all you got is on the outside, and you got nothing on the inside, one day you're going to lose all you got. And then you're nothing. You're nothing. You're just a bitter old woman or a pervert old man. You got nothing on the inside, one day you're going to be left with nothing. But if inside you have Christ Jesus, godly character, love, when would people ever, ever turn away from love? Joy and peace, all you going to be people looking for that, goodness, gentleness, come on. You let, you let God's Holy Spirit make you a godly woman on the inside, you will never go out of style. Praise the Lord. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now they might praise that beauty for a while, but shall be, not going to happen. Not going to happen. These women, you know, they're, they're, all these movie stars, they go along, you know, they're doing okay. 25, big parts. 35, big parts. They get to be about 40. Uh, they just vanish off the scene. Say, so why? Favor's deceitful. Beauty's vain. I got nothing left to offer anybody. Not so with Christian women. Not so with godly women. You've always got plenty to offer. In, in fact, godly character gets more beautiful. You just get more gracious and more loving and more kind as days go by. That's how it ought to be. Woman feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands. Let her own works praise her in the gates. Now where's that man? Where was he? He's sitting out there in the gate, 23. You know what the Bible says? When that woman goes out with that man, that woman goes out with that man, a virtuous woman, praiseworthy praiseworthy you don't want to be the kind of girl gets noticed because she's a tramp you don't want to be the kind of woman gets noticed because she's a reproach to her gender shame to the Lord you want to get noticed because you've been so good to your husband so good to your children so good to your church so good to your God there's a, there's a great woman here She's industrious, she's hardworking, she's talented. All of these things center around the home and the family, and yet they reach out beyond the home and beyond the family. And she's a blessing to God. She's a blessing to her husband. She's a blessing to our children. And the Bible says, who can find a virtuous woman? Isn't it a sad thing that they're so hard to come by, so difficult to search out? That's a sad thing. Ought not to be. Godly men, godly women. Possible. Possible. If you look back on your life, you are saved. You know Jesus Christ is your Savior. And you got, you got any miles behind you at all, 
here's what you've learned. Your life is not better off because of pretty people. It's better off because of good people. You don't make a list and say, here's a list of the, of the ten best looking people I ever saw in my life. But you could make a list tonight of the ten people that have helped you the most in your life. And the people on that list, you don't care what they look like. Because what they imparted to you had nothing to do with their physical appearance. It had to do with their spiritual character and their spiritual quality. Praise the Lord. So, let's, uh, let's praise these virtuous women. Let's encourage our young Christian ladies and our girls to grow up to be virtuous. This world, listen, this world wants every one of these girls to grow up and be trash. Just something for, for men to use. We want them to grow up to be like what we read about here tonight. Good, 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 good women. Happy lives. Blessed lives. Good families. Good homes. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for all these dear godly Christian ladies we have in our church. And what a blessing they are. What an example they are to us. And uh, Lord, some of these things are, are hard that we looked at tonight in, in our culture, in our society. But uh, God, just about everything in our society is wrong and messed up. So help us not to look at that. Help us trust you and believe you. And Lord, there's a lot of things in this uh, passage have to do with um, just giving, giving up our own way for your way, but then have enough faith in you to believe that we'll be blessed and better off for it, having done it. God, help us to trust you. Help these ladies to trust you and believe that if they would give themselves to you, to their husbands, to their children, that you'd see to it their life was better than it could be otherwise. Lord, help the men who have virtuous women, virtuous wives, help us, God, to praise and appreciate them as we ought. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.